This is a common question that I get from both of my cohorts. I have students that are taking the nursing theory class with me and they are my nurse practitioner students. And then I also have students that are in the nurse educator practicum with me right now. And these two groups actually ask very similar questions. Okay, so here it is and we'll see what you all think as part of this snapshot kind of warm up. What are going to be the steps that you're going to take to ensure you're ready for practice? Now, this is if you're at the bedside as a clinician, again, thinking about that nurse practitioner student, or if you are that nurse educator student who is trying to either hone in your skills as a current nurse educator or develop some of those new skills that perhaps you've never been exposed to before because you haven't taught, at least formally taught, because we know all nurses our teachers, but you haven't formally taught in the classroom. All right, so what is going to be that key strategy to ensure that we show up as ready as possible, that we're competent and confident, okay? We know that those kind of go hand in hand as we increase our competency level, our knowledge, our comprehension, as our knowledge is validated, such as with the c &E exam, we are more, more confident in the work that we do every day. Welcome back, everybody, to Dr. Sellers Educate. If this is the first time you're joining us, welcome. We're delighted that you're here. And if you're returning, welcome back. So in this snapshot, that's exactly what we're going to be focusing on is what are those key elements of a lesson plan? Now, we're going to focus for purposes of our conversation on how we influence quality improvement as it relates to the role of the nurse educator. There are four key elements when we talk about levels of success that we want to make sure that we follow to best support student success because that is the goal. We want to equip students with the support that they need so that they can achieve success. All right, and just like we always do, we want to start with the thought-provoking question. As a nurse educator, you are tasked with developing a lesson plan that will contribute to the quality improvement of your nursing curriculum. Which of the following approaches would most effectively ensure that your lesson plan positively influences curriculum quality? So we have A, focus on covering advanced nursing concepts, ensuring that the curriculum remains challenging and rigorous. B, design the lesson plan based on feedback from recent graduates and incorporating evidence-based practices, or C, you want to limit the lesson content to basic nursing skills to reinforce foundational knowledge. If you haven't printed out your study worksheet yet, I want you to go ahead and do that right now or pull out just a blank sheet of paper. This is going to allow you to stay focused as we talk through this content today. The second step I want you to take is to write down today's date, whatever date you're watching this snapshot. This is going to help you stay focused and frankly, remember what you talked about and what the date was. How many of us attend a lot of webinars or a lot of conferences? OK, so I'm sure hands are going up and sometimes it's hard to remember. OK, first of all, where did I hear that information? And second of all, when did that even happen? Because I don't know about you, but for me, time is going by so quickly. So you want to make sure you write down today's date. And then the third step we want you to take is to write down what is your objective for today. Okay, so what is it that you want to walk away learning? Our goal is that we are reinforcing or maybe we're reintroducing concepts to you all every single snapshot because we want this time to be valuable for you. All right, so now we're going to talk about what are these levels that we're mentioning and how do they align with the content anyway that we're talking about related to lesson plan? Well, that's a great question. There are different levels as we're developing our lesson plan that we want to consider to ensure that we are providing the best support possible in the classroom and in the clinical experience. So that top level is really looking at content. So what is it that we want to pull from our resources? OK, what is it that we want to leverage with our students related to their background, perhaps? What content, what expertise are they bringing into the classroom to to in order for us to identify what the roadmap to success is going to look like. Okay, so remember that. I want you to keep that in mind. I hadn't even thought of that before, but that's a good one. That is our goal. We want to help students create a roadmap of success for them. We know that every single student learns differently. So by bringing in the content, they are bringing that in themselves, right? Because they are adult learners. So they have some 
prior knowledge of content that we are discussing, even if that means the content that they're pulling from really is related to the resources, okay? And we want to make sure when we talk about resources that we are looking at the date of that resource, especially when it comes to textbooks. Is there a more current edition that we want to update our syllabi or the course requirements to reflect? And can students access the resources that we have outlined for them? I'll give you a good example. When universities are using ATI as an example for some of their supportive resource as a supportive resource to help better engage students. For example, if there's quizzes that students are taking in the ATI platform, well, if students don't have the funding, first of all, to pay if there is a fee associated with the access of that resource, they're going to be challenged to be able to use it in the way that we intended it for it to be used. Another component of access that I want you to think about is the technology levels that are required for that resource. So we want to know that information. It's important for us to find that out from the vendor. We want to include that on our syllabi to ensure the students know exactly what software or speed levels that are necessary for their laptops. And then we want to connect them with tech support. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, I get a lot of questions from students, even about Turnitin and how to access the plagiarism checker so that they can determine what their similarity index is before they submit their assignment or they can know what revisions they need to make based on the data that they're able to gather from the plagiarism checker. Um, so when you think about resources, you want to think about access and what resources are available to help support students with any barriers that they may have related to access. Next is going to be prior class performance. What kind of feedback that we receive from the students in the last class that actually um, took the class. Is there, are there going to be necessary changes that we need to make? Or did we make those changes? And then thinking also about how we evaluate our students related to that specific content. And then that core component of the lesson plan are going to be those activities. What specific teaching strategies are we using to engage our students and what level is that engagement? What level is the learning that we are developing or crafting for the student interaction that we are having with them? You think about Bloom's taxonomy, pages 188 and 189 in Billings and Halstead as an example. You want to look at the level of Bloom's that's associated with that activity. We know with our nursing students, we want to advance their comprehension of concepts in a way where they may start at that lowest level, which is remembering, but we want to progress students to the application and analysis level so that they will be able to develop clinical judgment skills in clinical practice. All right, so those are some of the key elements when we talk about lesson plan. These are the four success levels. So we want to consider the content that we are teaching, how it aligns with the program outcomes, the resources. Is there a more current edition? Can students access that resource? What support is provided to students so that they can access that information? Are there barriers when we think about accessing that information? And then the feedback from students in a prior class. What do we do with that data? Did we look at the data? I know it can be hard sometimes to look through that feedback, but it's a really important part of the process when we think about lesson planning. And then the last core element it's going to be those engaging activities. What are the levels that we are developing our teaching strategies? How are they aligned with the various levels of Bloom's taxonomy? We don't want to just stay at that lowest level. All right. And then next is going back to our thought provoking question. So let's see how you did. If you chose B, you are correct. Design the lesson plan based on feedback from recent graduates and incorporating evidence-based practices. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the why. Well, first of all, quality improvement, it is a dynamic process, right? It's not a one and done. It's never marked off of our list. It's an evolving process. It's a living, breathing process that we have to follow. And it does require for our curriculum to be updated, right? We want it to be current and relevant with those areas of our existing curriculum that may need a little bit of refreshing or enhancement. And then the last element related to this thought provoking question is our ability to align our lesson plans with the current trends that we hear about from our stakeholders in the healthcare setting, 
based on what the literature is telling us about evidence-based practices to ensure that we have the most up-to-date information. This is not only going to best prepare our students for the healthcare environment, but also it helps us stay current and knowledgeable about what's actually going on in the healthcare setting. So we want to do our due diligence, not only for our students when we talk about quality improvement and our goal of ensuring that we are aligning our curriculum with the program outcomes, but it also helps us be a better nurse educator and keeps us current with any trends that we may want to know about. So next steps for you. On your study worksheet at that very in that very bottom section, we refreshed our study worksheet a couple of weeks ago. So hopefully you have the most current version and it's right here in the description. Um, but, but the next step for you hopefully is moving forward on your journey. We heard from Jen and we enjoy hearing feedback from our nurse educator colleagues. She shared with us that she felt like the expertise that she was able to gather from our time together was exactly what she needed. She says that our content was delivered flawlessly. We had a fantastic plan that helped her be successful. She knew exactly what to do. All right, I want to pause right there. How many of us have been very frustrated on this journey because we didn't know what resources to use, what next steps to take? Well, that's exactly why Dr. Sellers Educate is here. We are a team of content experts that are certified as nurse educators, and we want to support you as you move forward. We don't want you to go through the process alone, okay? That can become very overwhelming, and that's why more than 50% of the nurse educators never take the exam, right? They, we all start out with this great goal, but we're not able to accomplish it because of competing priorities and lack of support. So we appreciate whenever we hear positive feedback from our colleagues, and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Reach out if you have questions. Info at Dr. Sellers Educate. Have a great one, everybody. Bye-bye.